architecture, landscape, historical significance, pretty cool. Stainless steel all the way around, and this is the corner of a massive equilateral triangle. What we have here is the Great Arch in St. Louis, a fascinating story about a park that surrounds this piece of architecture. At the starting point of the Lewis and Clark Expedition in St. Louis, Missouri, lies the Jefferson National Expansion Memorial. Designated as a national memorial in December of 1935, the park was established to commemorate three things. The Louisiana Purchase, of which St. Louis was the capital, the first civil government west of the Mississippi River, and the Dred Scott case, which brought the slavery debate to the forefront of American culture and politics. Lying along the banks of the Mississippi River, the 91-acre park is the site of some of St. Louis's most famous buildings, including the old courthouse, where the Dred Scott case was first heard, and the Museum of Westward Expansion, where you'll experience the Old West as you take a journey into the past and see the tools, guns, and animals, and wagons of explorers, pioneers, cowboys, and Native Americans who helped forge our nation. The park also has beautiful reflecting pools that allow for some great photographs on clear days. Residents and tourists alike enjoy relaxing among the beautiful trees, and occasionally even a ball game is played here. I'm a plug, what can I say? But the most famous attraction is the glorious Gateway Arch. In 1944, it was determined that a memorial should be built in the park that would be transcending in spiritual and aesthetic values and include one central feature, a single shaft, a building, an arch, or something else that would symbolize American culture and civilization. The seven judges unanimously chose a design by a Finnish American architect and furniture designer named Eero Saarinen. Saarinen had emigrated to the United States in 1923 at the age of 13 and took courses in sculpture and furniture design at the Cranberg Academy of Art in Michigan. Construction began on February 12, 1963 and ended on October 28, 1965. The final cost was $13 million. With inflation, that would be over $90 million today. The Gateway Arch officially opened to the public on June 10, 1967. The cross sections of the arch's legs are equilateral triangles, narrowing from 54 feet per side at the base to 17 feet at the top. Each wall consists of a stainless steel skin covering a sandwich of two carbon steel walls with reinforced concrete in the middle from ground level to 300 feet with carbon steel from that point all the way to the peak. You can actually walk right up to the arch and touch the stainless steel walls. The arch itself is actually hollow to accommodate a unique tram system that takes visitors to an observation deck on the top. Unless, of course, they would rather climb the 1,076 stairs in one of the legs. Either way, the view is worth it. Once at the top, visitors can see the mighty Mississippi River to the east and the beautiful St. Louis skyline to the west. At 630 feet, the Gateway Arch is not only Missouri's tallest accessible building, but also the tallest man-made monument in the United States. In order to support itself, the arch is heavy, weighing more than 43,000 tons, but it was designed to sway in the wind. In a 20 mile per hour wind, it moves up to an inch, but if the wind hits 150 miles per hour, the arch can sway up to 18 inches. Not only does it move, but in cold temperatures, it actually shrinks. In January 1970, the arch shrank a full three inches. I'm glad I wasn't there that day. Today, St. Louis's Gateway Arch is one of the most visited man-made attractions in the world, with over four million visitors annually, of which one million travel all the way to the top. You know, I hope you've enjoyed learning some interesting facts about the style and design of this incredible national monument. And I hope you'll subscribe to eHow Home.